Hello, everyone, and welcome to the share today. I'm going to start my share screen, hopefully, so that will, uh, and we're going to start at the wrong location, but we will fix it. And when I say we'll fix it, I'm hoping that they're going to listen to me. There we go. Okay, so welcome today to the four elements. Thank you for coming. Um, I maybe like to start, well, I start as I always do by saying thank you. Today, my thank yous go to all the people who inspire me, who spread their Torah around and inspire me to spread around mine. Um, the first one will have to be the Rav. Uh, the second one would be Rabbi David, David Foreman. I've learned from many other people, but today I'd like to have a special mention to um, Rabbi Chaim Metzger, because he inspired me to do this kind of a series with a bunch of different things. He often, I remember his series on mythical creatures, and now he has one coming up on addictions. And so the way he does it with, with different things as a series was very inspirational and very interesting when you go to them. So therefore, I wanted to do the same kind of thing instead of doing talking about Batsheva or whatever. So here we go. So thank you all. <clears throat> as a roadmap, which I am now trying to do to make myself more organized, we are going to have four parts. One, we're going to introduce the four elements, and then we're going to introduce just the two we're going to de deal with today, which are the Adama and the Ruach, the Adama on this side. Can you, can you see my cursor? I hope so. And the Ruach on this side. <clears throat> and then next week, of course, we'll do Mayim and Esh, um, fire and uh, water. And so we're going to introduce the two of them and their connection. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Ruach, and then we're going to go to Adama, and I, I subtitled it a Grand Tikkun. The problem is there is so much. When I started, when I set up do this, I think like now I've realized it could be a whole semester's course. And I'm really, really sorry that, you know, you have to, I am your guide and therefore I take you where I want to go. But there's a whole bunch of other things that we, where we could have gone with this, but I've just chosen one direction and that's not the boys band. Okay, so introduction to the four, where we start. And for some reason, my computer is not behaving today. Okay, so here we start. Um, there are other sources than this, but I thought this was succinct and I, I kind of liked how it how it presented it. So therefore I decided that we're going to give it legitimacy by, <clears throat> by saying that there are within the realm of Judaism, the idea of these four elements. So here we go. This is the Ramban on Vayikra. Um, I'm just going to read it in English. Some I'll read in English, some in Hebrew. Know that just as the formation at the original creation of man's body, as well as that of all living creatures, vegetation and minerals was from the four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. These basic elements were first created by God and out of a combination of them, he made man, etc., which were combined by divine power to form material bodies, which as a result of their thickness and coarseness could be perceived by the five sense senses. Okay, so this is like, I'm sort of saying, yes, we, we are able, we are allowed to talk about the the four elements as a uh, creation of God and as the formation. Like obviously this is quite quote old science, but nevertheless, it, it's, it has last, it lasted for thousands of years. So, and it, there's some kind of, you know, sort of metaphysical also idea in it, which we're going to see. So here we go. I'd also like to add this idea, which is um, this, this slide is taken from the Rav Shir on more Nebuchim whole, whole cloth, but I just, um, highlighted two, two words, two sections that I wanted to talk about. And that says here, So there's four fundamental um, elements of which are, as we know, uh, fire, wind, water, and earth. But the part that I want to um, highlight here is the So the fire and water, fire, no, sorry, fire and um, wind, like move upwards as they go, right? And two, and two go down. So the two of those, like sort of their, 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 their direction is going southbound. It's going to back to the earth, back to gravity. Um, so therefore I have my up and my down arrows, which we will see again. And that's an idea we want to keep. And I'm gonna expand on it a little bit as we go. So now we've done our introduction to the four and I'm going to start talking about just these two specific ones, earth and wind. So where do we start with earth and wind? 
well. And when I say wind, I'm going to also say spirit. And my, okay. So here we go. So this, I'm going to read it in English first, but then we're going to get to the Hebrew soon, just so we have understand what's happening. This is, of course, the creation of mankind. Um, so I just took a selection with the highlight of the middle one, which is the pasuk we're um, most interested in. So when no shrub of the field was yet on earth and no grasses of the field had yet sprouted, because the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth and, had, and there was no man to till the soil, but a flow or a mist would well up from the ground and water the whole surface of the earth. The Lord God formed man in Hebrew Adam from the dust of the earth, Hebrew Adama. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. And from the ground, the Lord God caused to grow, grow every tree that was pleasing to the sight and good for food with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge, good and bad. Okay, so this, we're familiar with this idea, but I just wanted to bring the psukim for you because we're going to look at them again and again and again. So here we go. The first thing we have to note is this idea of aretz because aretz means land and adama means land. So we're going to have to sort of discern what does it mean when the Torah says aretz and what does it mean when it says land? So this is totally what I've come to understand, but I don't have a source for you, that aretz is more of a geopolitical entity. So in other words, in this case, it's more geo, because if we look at the whole, this is Perak Bet, this is the second Perak of Rashid. If we look at all of Perak Aleph, it always says aretz, 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 except for one time where it says, um, kol remes ha'adama, which makes sense because every crawly thing is crawling not on the geopolitical land, but it's crawling actually on the dirt, the soil part of the land. So that's what happens in Perak Aleph. Perak, and so we see it just at the beginning here of Perak Bet, but then we see what happens. We have all of a sudden, there's a transition in these two psukim here in He and Vav, where you have both Aretz and Adama, and then it transitions from this pasuk here all the way to from the from this pasuk to the end of the story of Cain. So the story, all the story of Adam and all the story of Cain, you're going to have the idea of Adama. And then there's going to be a pasuk with the two of them together again. And then from there, it goes on to the rest of the, the history of the Jewish people. But it's just interesting, I found, that the stories of Adam and, and Cain, both having issues with the land, as we'll see, um, although today we're focusing mo mostly on Adam, um, those people are, the, the Tanakh text always talks about it as Adam, as Adama. And of course, as the, we noted just before, Adam and Adama have that same resonance in, in linguistically. Okay, so we're going to have to ask ourselves, we're going to see in a minute what's going to happen, why these are connected like this, why there are two together. But right now, we're going to move on. And I'm going to note also down here this pink word, mikedem, right? Vita Shem Elohim Gan Ba'edem. So God made a garden in Eden, mikedem in the east. So do we really need to know where it is? Like, you know how I learn already. We always look at the things that are outliers and sort of why are they there? So why is this mikedem there? I don't know, we're gonna find out. We're gonna just keep it in mind as we go forward, okay? Now, we're gonna get back to this. We call So there's, the, the vegetation has not yet sprouted on the land. And the um, grasses of the fields have not yet sprouted either. Because God has not yet um, sent rain upon the earth or given any kind of liquid. Adam ain and, and man was not there adama. Again, just like we're going to keep the mikedem, the kedem, the east idea, we're also going to keep this laavod idea in mind because we have to ask ourselves, what is it about Adam, adama, and that he has to work this adama, that he has to be a tiller of the soil. So we can say if it would have just said because. Adam was not there yet. We could say, okay, Adam is the primary creation. He's the most important thing in the world. And yes, we are, we believe that in Judaism, right? We're not equal to animals. So, so therefore, he could, it could be like a symphony, right? If, if you were, if there's a symphony going on, you could go as a guest. And that that might be the understanding if the word la avod wasn't there. We might say Adam had to show up because the whole symphony was for him, right? But that's not quite it. I mean, if we look at it again in the terms of a symphony, maybe this is from my last year about music, but we could say that Adam, not Adam, that Hashem is the composer of the symphony, right, the creator of all, 
but yet Adam needs to be there to be the um, conductor of the symphony. So therefore this la'avod is going to be important for us. Okay. Uh, and of course the primary pasuk, the, the central pasuk literally in, in what I brought here is this pas pasuk about the creation of mankind, right? He made him um, soil from the earth. And he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living creature. Okay, so that's really the, the crux upon everything else that we're going to talk about right now. So of course, I'm going to make you a little diagram. And we're going to say in this diagram, God created the earth, that's this little light arrow. So therefore, essentially, ultimately, God is the creator of, of man by definition, but through he utilized the earth because adama, he, may, he used the earth's soil in order to create the body of man, right? And on the other hand, God himself created nishmat chayim, okay? So, and again, that, that's where we're going to go with ruach and we're gonna see why that's ruach in a second. Okay, I think maybe I'm gonna stop here, any questions? Okay, moving on. Um, there you go. So um, I don't know whether Varda, my friend, created this. <laughs> I like it that somebody's laughing. Um, so um, I just thought I'd throw this in because it was cute. <laughs> so if I wanted to give Varda credit if she created it. I'm not sure. Okay, next we're going to talk about Ruach. So we're going to talk about Ruach and we're going to have, we're going to do a, a case study in one person, but through that case study, we're going to understand more about the concept of Ruach. And really ruach in one direction with a little tag on of something else. So here we go. Okay, first of all, this is the Kliakar on Genesis 2.7 and to, well, Brishi 2.7, which is the, this pasuk here, right? The one we just talked about, creating man from the ground and from God. Okay, so we first notice that the Kliakar in this, this blue word ruach seems to believe that Nishmat Chayim is ruach right, is the spirit of God. So we're not going to right now talk about it as wind, we're going to talk about it as spirit. Okay, so we're going to put forth these four points. And here we go. Um, so the problem, the problem he has, and, and we're not going to do this, because it's just, there's too much. But the problem he has is if you look at this pasuk over here, right, God breathed into him nishmat and the nishama or the nishima, the breath of chayim. But then why does it change? You go, he adam the nefesh chaya. Right, so what's the difference between like nishma or nishama and nefesh, and why why do we need both of those things here? And the further complication is if you'll read other places in the first few prakim of Rishi, you're going to find that the animals are called nefesh chaya. Okay, so why why is there the, this difference? Why didn't you just say blew into him nishma chayim and that's it? And now he was like adam chaya. I don't know whatever. So here we go. So Piyakar has a few ideas. He says, "Ki nishmat chayim hi hanefesh hamisakelet misachelet hanitzchim." So it's the eternal intellectual. Um, the, the nishmat chayim is the eternal intellectual um, aspect of your soul. Tzeumad um, mi hanofeach. So go out and learn who put this into the his body. This is talking about God, right? God put this thing in him, so therefore it must be a holy spirit that is put in him. So even though God put in this nishmat the, chayim, the, the intellectual um, aspect, so he says basically, as you, God put it into you, but he is still started off as the um, rest of the animal creations. Okay, now let's just go one further and then we'll talk about it. And so the, the main idea of his completion, right, his actualization, if you want to use that word, is dependent upon the, um, the oh, well, sorry, is dependent upon, where did it go? Um, his, his, basically his, 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 um, uh, his ability to develop that aspect of his, his character, right? V'tov b'chirto, and in his good choices, kishi yipakach e'nei sichlo b'vo'o b'yamin. When he, as he 
gets older and older, his eyes are going to open to more and more things, and he's going to grow in his ruach, in his ability to, in his discernment, he's going to be less and less like the animals. So Kilo, when we think about like a young child, we think of they're very, very self-centered. They're very, very, I won't say animalistic, but they're really concerned with their own desires. And as they start to grow older, you're able to say to them, well, now you need to share and that, et cetera. And, and have those higher level um, intellectual understandings of what it means to be a human as opposed to an animal. Right. So at the beginning, even though he has that Ruachaim in him, right? Mikol makom, so he doesn't have yet that nishama, that spirit of that, that higher level um, spirit in actuality. It's only in potential at that point. Okay, so do we understand that? We're, this person is saying, just like the Rambam, we need to develop ourselves as humans, as individuals, as intellectual people and people with a spirit because we can be just like the animals or we can be higher than that. Okay, and then we're going to skip down to here. So everything is um, dependent upon actualized in utilizing his hands, basically his uh, just doing it himself, right? So he's mankind is always even if you get to that point, you're always able or you always can switch it up like you you can at one moment say i'm going to be like elevated and holy and the next minute you can say i'm going to you know give in to my desires basically so that's what he's saying here like you it's a, basically a constant struggle to try to be the best person you can be okay um so in, because of this it doesn't say remember when everything is created or not everything but most things it says, God saw it was good, right? He created it, it was good. And then he moves on to the next day and the next thing, right? So because with mankind, we don't yet know if it's going to be good or bad because that's a choice each individual person has to make, right? So therefore, that's why God didn't say it was good. We're hoping it's good. God hopes it's good. We're, we're trying to live up to that every day. Okay, I think that's a, a lot to digest. Uh, would anyone like to comment or ask a question at this point? Okay, and there'll be a lot of points to ask a question. So, so, but if you have, I'd rather we'll stop and we'll ask. So then going back to the Pasuk that we're talking about, we can see that the Nishmat Chaim is going to draw you up towards God, right? As, as you develop this potential, you're going to be drawn up to the source, as it said over here, right? To go up and to go down. So you want to develop your Nishmat Chaim and go towards God. And afar will bring you down, not necessarily the down is a bad thing, but it, it, it's um, more to your animalistic nature. Okay, and sometimes we do that, that that's happening, but it's not, it's not the ideal. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to take the case study that I mentioned before. And the case study is going to be in Yehoshua, about Yehoshua, the, the person who succeeded Moshe. Okay, so it says, Vayomer Hashem al Moshe, kach so Hashem tells Moshe to take Yoshua bin Nun, that he has ruach, the spirit within him, and put your hands on him, i.e. to like, sort of transfer the power. Okay, so we have a bunch of Mephoshim we're going to see today, and we're going to start with Ibn Ezra. And Ibn Ezra says what we just thought we knew, which is that, hey, wait a second, Everybody has ruach because we've just said that God placed ruach in man and I eat all of man's descendants. So we have to ask that question. So what does it mean here, ruach? Like, why do they even need to say that? And he gives his own answer, but it's not shayach to what I, where we want to go today. So we're going to just skip that over, but we needed to ask the question. So Ha'amik Devar says, Isha she ruach bo, rucho, hainu da'ato. It's, it's his, um, his understanding. O maybe pne atzma, And it stands... His, he has his own um, understanding and his own integrity. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so he does not have a desire to go after the desires of himself or the desires of anyone. He's not influenced by anyone. or the desires of anyone. He's not influenced by anyone. He's basically what he's describing here as a leader, which makes sense because we want Yoshua to be a leader. So when he has Ruach, what it's saying is he has an independent spirit and he has integrity. 
Okay, I know that's the ruach beyond the base ruach, basically. I think that's what is being said here. Okay, and the Malbim, <clears throat> the Malbim says, So you're going to put your hands on him. So what, how is that going to work? So you're going to give your extra spirit, you're going to take sort of transfer your spirit over to him, right? Um, because he was already a Ishruach, right? You're going to, this is this Pasuk here is before it happens. So he's saying he's already like on his way. He's, he's already, that's what he wants to do in his life. So therefore you're going to help him by putting your hands on him and making him your successor. So it's only for those who are prepared for it. It's not just stomazoid. Uh, so it's interesting so that God doesn't give wisdom except to people that already have wisdom. So we can look at that and say, okay, where does that come about? You want to pipe up? Okay, most notably in Shlomo HaMelech, right? You, he asks, God says, what can I do for you to help you be king? And he goes, okay, I'd like some wisdom, please. And like by definition, if you're asking for wisdom, then you're already wise because you know that wisdom is important to have. So I just thought that was um, interesting. That was a support for this pasuk here. Um, and then we're going to just leave that Aramaic there. So it says, that's why it says he already had ruach. So this extra thing that he's going to get from Moshe is going to give him kedusha, holiness, and nevuah prophecy. Or Moshe's hands being placed on him, and your influence. Um, okay, so that's sort of a, a different idea from him being a person of integrity. That's one idea of Ruach. And the other idea of Ruach is that you're going to give them something that they, um, it's going to elevate them in some way. And here it's Kedusha and Nebuah. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to look here. Brother Ralbag, Isha Sher Ruach Bo, Rotelomar, Ruach Elohim, Kihuhaya Ruilinvoa. So he was going to, in the future, have prophecy. So therefore, I'm not really sure if the Ralbag means that it sort of like was a mistake in writing that it should have said Ruach Elohim, or it's just that we are supposed to understand that it said Ruach, that it means Ruach Elohim, because, you know, that's, that's the idea. If you have Nivua, then you must have Ruach Elohim. So it, it's like backwards, it must be because it is. <clears throat> but interestingly, in the last few psukim of Dvarim, before Yoshua actually takes over in, in the book of Yoshua, you see this. You see, Yoshua binun male ruach chokma. He was filled with the spirit of wisdom, right? Kisamach Moshe yadav alav, vishma'u elav b'nei Yisrael v'yasu kasher tzibar shem Moshe. So, because b'nei Yisrael listened to him, and really that's what Moshe wanted, and I believe that's my next slide, yes. Because just the few psukim before this, <clears throat> it basically said <clears throat> um, Moshe would like was asking God to place someone in his stead as he's about to die, right? <inaudible> so interesting. Now we're going to talk for two seconds that Hashem is the Eloke <inaudible> Haruchot. See, He is the um, God of this all the spirits, right? So, and we have to ask ourselves so. God also obviously has spirit. We know that from the idea of Ruach Elohim Merachefet Al Pnei Hamayim, right? That God's Ruach Elohim was hovering over the waters. We have the idea of Lo Bechayel Velo Bekoach Ki Im Beruchi Hashem Amar, that like, you, you don't, you're not going to succeed because of your strength or your chariots or anything. You're going to succeed because of my spirit, because I'm going to give you my spirit and you're going to win wars in that way. So obviously we're talking we're focusing right now on man and Yoshua specifically, but obviously Hashem is the source of all of these different kinds of ruchot. <clears throat> if you look at the second pasuk here, it's basically saying like, I want you, please God, make him a leader who's going to bring them in, take them out, and that they need a, a, a shepherd to be, because they are, they are sheep. So in that sense, Moshe was asking for a leader and not for a navi or not for a holy person he wanted. He was asking for a leader and that seems to be what he got in this idea over here, right? That, that um, Yeshua has Ruach Chochmah because you need to be smart, to, you know, to, to lead people, right? And also you need to have a, be a person of integrity, which was the other Mepharish that we talked about before. 
So, um, but again, we have to ask ourselves for Bitzalel in Shmot, it says, um, so he had, here's Ruach Chochma and here's Ruach Elokim Bechochma. So what is this? Again, we're not focusing on Bitzalel, but I'm just saying there is a, you could have, he could have said Ruach Elokim Bechochma. Whatever, but the idea here is the ikar, the main principle for Yoshua needed to be the ruach chokma. So I'm going to suggest that since Hashem is elokei haruchot, that each of us are going to get our own manner of ruach. And if we have what was just been said, if we have a desire already, it's already in us to be towards that ruach. Then we are going to be able to develop that ruach, and we have to sort of self-actualize and look at ourselves and say, okay. That's who I am. I'm an artist, or I'm I, I am a uh, leader, or I am somebody who can go out in the community and do chesed. And if that's me, then I need to basically ask Hashem to give me more of that, and I will develop it, and I will serve Him in that way. Okay, so that's our little um, you know musar shmuz for today. <laughs> okay, and so here we go. So I'm just contrasting this to putting the hands on before of Yoshua here earlier. <clears throat> Right, uh, uh, Moshe was saying, I can't do this all myself. So Hashem tells him, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, you're going to put your hands on the Shivim Zikenim, on the 70 elders, and So you're going to put your hands on the elders, and then they are going to take some of what you have, right? You're going to draw from Moshe's spirit and give it to them. So now the question becomes, when Moshe put his hands on Yoshua was that sort of because I want you to be leader and you're going to, I want the people to see that I'm choosing you. And then it will also give you, Yoshua, self confidence to go forward. And so maybe it really might not have really had some sort of metaphysical, mystical transfer of power. But here it seems to say that yes, there is this mystical transfer of Ruach of power. Well, not power, but the Ruach. Okay, so that's one aspect you can ask yourselves, and I don't have an answer whether it's one or the other, whether Ruach is actually metaphysically or physically transferred from one to, to, to another, or whether, you know, God obviously puts ruach in you, but is it um, something physical or is it something spiritual or confidence that you yourself have? And I just made you a list of three times that it talks about ruach elokim, ruach Hashem, ruach elokim. The first one is um, Haro asking about Yosef. The next one is Yiftach. The last one is, who did I say, Shaul, when he goes and prophesies with the traveling um, band of Nevi'im. And there's a bunch more, and here's more. So if, just if you want to stop, if you review this and stop it and you want to go check it out, there it is. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so let's just review quickly. The Ruach in people, you have this potential to be spiritual, potential to reach towards God, you, that you could be a person of integrity and wisdom, or any other, I, I want to expand on it and say any other quality that God chooses to put in you, because um, he's elokei haruchot. You can make it move up, like the Rambam would say, like you can move towards, you can develop yourself till you get to the prophecy and Kedusha. And so either one, either it's, you can say it's given or you work towards it, and we're not sure. I'm not going to make that decision right now. We're going to change um, course for 10 seconds, and I'm going to do something that I don't usually do. I'm going to like let you read this in silence. These are talking about not um, ruach of spirit, but actual ruach actual wind. And I'm just going to let you read it and tell me if you notice anything. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry if this is obvious, but if, is there an order? No. Okay, thanks. Okay, does anyone notice anything yet? They all have to do with a wind. Correct, because that's right. I, I wanted to bring the idea that it's not just a spirit that God gives over, but in the Tanakh, we actually do have an actual physical wind. Is there anything additional to the Thank you, by the way. Um, is there anything additional to the wind that you might notice? Um, some of them, say, all of them say Ruach Kadim. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted to, you to notice. So there's, the, again, this secondary Ruach Kadim. There's this either wind or spirit from the East. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind for future. 
Yeah, and I'm not saying that there's no, not every time it mentions Ruach in the Tanakh, it doesn't mention Kadim. I just brought four and there might be others, but I don't remember and I don't haven't come across in my research anything that says like, you know, Ruach Tzfoni. I mean, actually, I think there's one in Yechezkel, but okay. But most of the time there's, there's this thing going on with the East, okay? So now we're gonna move into Adama and it's good, we're about halfway through the grand tikkun, because this is going to take some time. So again, I want to apologize for not bringing you all the other references to Adama. We could talk about when we have the blessings and the curses, it will bless the land and it will bless it when we are kicked out of the land. Sometimes it will be called Adama because it's alluding to the, our physical connection with the land. And we're going to see more of that in a second. Um, <clears throat> right? Sometimes, it, I eat. sorry? I checked the chat. Oh, um, okay, just let me finish my thought and then I'm going to ask you to read it right. to me. So um, sometimes God will even speak directly to earth and, and, and other elements and say, you know, earth, do this for me or whatever. And, um, or he calls the earth to be witnesses. So I've missed out all of that. And I'm sorry for that. I just don't have time simply. So now, Elaine, would you mind reading me the chat? What is Kadim? Ah, okay, Kadim, thank you. It's an east wind. Sorry, thank you. That's a very important question. I don't know who asked it, but I really appreciate it, right? So Ruach Kadim, um, it's the same thing when the Gan Eden was uh, Mikedem, it's the same root source. So things are happening in the East and we're gonna talk about that very, very soon. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about this grand Tikkun. And I'm going to bring this source, which is quite long, but I'm going to read it for you in English. And then again, just similar to before, we'll pick up the Hebrew as we go, but I want you to understand what's happening. So if you know what this story, what this little Parshia is about, please at the end, you're gonna let me know what the topic is, okay? When you enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you as a heritage and you possess it and settle in it, you should take some of every fruit of the soil which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God will choose to establish his name. You shall go to the priest in charge at that time and say to him, I acknowledge this day before the Lord your God that I have entered the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to assign us. The priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. You shall then recite as follows before the Lord your God. And you might know where this is from. I'll take that answer soon. Uh, my father was a fugitive Aramean. He went down to Egypt with meager numbers and sojourned there, but there he became a great and very populous nation. The Egyptians dealt harshly with us and oppressed us. They imposed heavy labor upon us. We cried to the Lord and the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our plea and saw our plight, our misery and our oppression. The Lord freed us from Egypt by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm and awesome power, and by signs and portents. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Wherefore, I now bring the first fruits of the soil, which you, O or, or Lord, have given me. You shall leave it, i.e. the basket, before the Lord your God and bow low before the Lord your God. And you shall enjoy together with the Levite and the stranger in your midst, all the bounty that the Lord your God has bestowed upon you and your household. Okay, so now, first question, what's this topic? Bikurim. Right, Bikurim, right? Bringing the first fruits of your land. Okay, and obviously the connection to what we're doing is here in the Adama. There's definitely an emphasis on the fruits of your land, right? That you're bringing, this is the connection to the land. Now I would like to ask you the question. Um, if you were to say, because I remember the title was a grand tikkun. So have you heard, what, it, what does the word tikkun mean? Thank you, I, I appreciate that I must translate these things. Tikkun means a something we did in the past and now you're trying to do reparations for it. You're trying to say, I, I'm not like that. I'm not gonna do that again. I, uh, I, I've learned from my mistakes and I'm going to be better in my ways. So there's probably one single word for this, like chuva, right? You're going to, you, you've understood you're wrong and you're trying to make it better and repair it. Okay, so what is classically, I believe, what would you say is the tikkun, is, the, is Bikurim the tikkun for something that happened in our history? Or, yes. Anybody have a thought? Okay, if you're answering the chat, Elaine, we're gonna just monitor that in case it's something, but he says something there. It's too many things on my screen. Anything, anybody say anything? No. Okay, so the tikkun is classically thought to be a tikkun for the sin of the spies, okay? And I just brought one picture, hopefully it's gonna come up in a second, of 
the spies entering the land. And this is the place they went, went from. They came in from a place called Shitin, and they went towards Yericho, right, and across Gilgal, Yericho, etc. So the spies, when they came to the land, what did they do? They said it was a bad land. We shouldn't go there, da, da, da. And so now, when we do come into the land and we give our fruits, we're going to God, we're happy to be here, right? That seems like a very logical tikkun. Anyone disagree? Okay, I'm just going to, I was going to spend more time, but I, I would rather focus on something else. The three people in case again, so if case you want to go back and stop the uh, video and check this out, these are three people and these are when they live, the Ariza, the Ariha Kadosh, who lived in Spat, he is um, Isaac Luria, he, I won't say first came up with this idea, but he certainly promoted this idea that it's the Tikkun for the spies. Then Rabbi Menachem Ziemba, who's a fascinating character. I brought a quote from him, but I really, it's too long. I don't have a talk, time to pour it. He was in the Warsaw Ghetto, and he basically said that Jews should not die al Kiddush Hashem. They should live al Kiddush Hashem. They should fight in the resistance in the ghetto. And I think that was so inspirational. But anyway, so look him up. He's great. Um, and then the, the current person in Israel right now is Rabbi Elchanan Samet, who does for the spies what I'm hoping to do for what I want to do today. Okay, so that's just for you as a, as a um, source. Uh, and so now I think the tikkun of the spies uh, the, the, is being fulfilled because, okay, we don't bring Biku Rim because we don't have a temple, but yet we do have a land, correct? We have the land of Israel. And therefore we are showing Hashem with hopefully this is going to come up that we are grateful for being in the land. We are thankful and here it is, okay? So this is, it says, farmers of Kibbutz Shalavim, which is near, near where I live, four hours before Shemitah, saying goodbye to their fields and giving them over to Hashem in song. And hopefully it will play. With sound. <laughs> So we get the point. The point is, I think that we today living in the land of Israel are trying to make that tikkun by showing Hashem that we are very grateful for the land. And this is one aspect of it. And I now need to go to the next slide. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Very sorry. But my computer seems to be super slow today in the last few days. Okay, I'm going to go. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to suggest that we're going to leave behind the idea of the, the as a tikkun, as a, a reparation or a recalibration of the sin of the spies, I'm going to suggest another, another recalibration. And I'm going to say it has to do with kol pri ha'adama, right? So the focus more on the pri ha'adama, on, on the fruit of the land. And if I would say that, can anyone guess what uh, tikkun I'm going to talk about? What we did wrong in the past that we're going to now be fixing by this idea of bikurim? Okay, I, I, thank you for shaking your head. That means a lot that you're thinking about it. Yeah, somebody have? Okay, if you know me, you sorry? Give us a hint, give us a hint. <laughs> well, it's a pea, so it's a fruit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I got it. It's the, it's, it's, it's Adam and Chava. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's see. But so anyone who knows me, anyone who's been to Mashirim know that I'm going to try and prove it to you with two things, a conceptual links and textual links. Today I'm adding something else called a subtle link, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about are these uh, conceptual links. That means the idea of what's being talked about is the idea that we have in Bikurim. So I wanna not spend a lot of time on this, but let's see what we can what we can do it. So each time like here, right, I've given you, it's in order more or less. Um, so we have the idea of entering the land, right? Kita arts, you're coming to the land. So in the discussion of, um, of the, the sin of Adam, what happened? We were kicked out of a land, right? We were kicked out of a very special land, Gan Eden, 
And now we're coming into a very special lens. Okay, so we want to reverse the what happened before and rectify it. So that's number one. And we're talking about Mereshit pre called Priadama from the premier fruit, fruit. Now, again, keep in mind that this is the fruit that in the Garden of Eden, God said, don't eat this fruit. And Bikurim, our fruit, that God said, don't eat this fruit. Bring them, right? Bring them to, to the um, to the Beit HaMikdash or to the Mishkan, okay? Um, God gave it. So there's this idea that God is in charge of moving people around and we are very grateful to be there. Again, that's sort of like the sin of the spies, being grateful, right? So God gave you this fruit. This is, you have to recognize that this is a gift from God, right? Just like all the fruit, when it's like God said in the um, garden, you can eat all these fruits, just not this one, right? So you're going to go to a very specific place, so the specific place we're talking about is the Beit HaMikdash or the Mishkan. We're going to go, right? There's a special place within the garden, those two trees, right? There's a special place within Eretz Yisrael, and that is the, the um, Mishkan, let's say. So the Kohen is going to take something from you, right? He's going to take this basket from you, and just like you took the fruit from the tree, okay? So we're, we're working on that. And you're going to declare before, before God. Now, in the Garden of Eden, of course, we were hiding. We didn't want to declare anything. We wanted, we would, like, if you left us alone, goodbye. We don't need to talk to you, God. Right? But, so here we're, we're stepping up, we're taking responsibility, and we're declaring. So again, the same idea that this is not just any land. It is a, a, a very, very good land. Like Gan Eden was a very, very good land. It's not just Hashem gave it to us, but now it's also good. So again, your premier, your very, this very, um, this fruit is taken and given to God, whereas before we took from God, and we, we're giving it back now and recognizing that it's God's. Okay, and the last thing, which is very interesting, it says, V'samachta bechol hatov. You are going to be happy when all the good. So this this tree that gave you like bad things that you got bad outcomes from it. Now you're going to do this. You're going to rectify it. And I think this is sort of like the corner piece because if you're going to do it, they didn't really need to say you're going to visamachta. Like this is just something you have to do. After every um, after every mitzvah, does it say this is going to be your reward? This is going to be what you get from it? No. This is this is one. I mean, I'm not saying there's none, but this is not. It's not by definition every mitzvah you get told what you're going to have as a reward. So it's interesting that this tov is going to come to you. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop now. Any questions so far before we get to the um, textual links? Cause that's a little bit longer. No, but it's very nice to uh, be inspired by your class and the wisdom. I like how you put it all together. It's so exciting to be learning again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad you could be here, right? I thought, okay, we'll talk later. Um, okay, but thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, let's move on, um, unless there are questions. I've just brought this, this is the story of Adam and Chava, and I'm going to, to review it while it stands on the screen, <clears throat> just to make sure you have, you remember it, but I'm sure you do. So basically, we know Adam and Chava, there's a snake, um, and, and he um, tricks Chava, because we don't know where Adam was, that's a whole other shear of mine, but anyway, and but but and he told her that you won't die, and so therefore she eats it. She gives it to Adam. They are both they understood that they were naked before, but then they oh, their eyes were opened to their nakedness, and they run and get fig leaves and they hide. So Hashem looks for them. Quote, you know, obviously he knew where they were, but he asks, you know, where are you? I'm walking in the garden. Get over here, right? He um, he questions them, and they answer him, and then he gives them the curses slash the outcomes of of what they've done, and then he sends them out of the garden because lest they eat from the tree of of it's um, right? And he puts up these this sword that turns around and and these the kruvim that guard the exit or the entrance, either one, whatever way you look at it, to Gan Eden. Okay, so that's all on this page, and we're going to go now trying to find the lexical, the the um, textual links between this story of the garden, which obviously you can see them there already, and what happened in our story. So the first link, of course, is the pre, right? There's pre in the story of the Garden of Eden, and there's pre that we're bringing here, and as I've explained, we're taking God's fruit and giving it back to him. <clears throat> the next, next, um, so in the Garden story, it says, 
ויני חיהו בגן עדן, לעובדו ולשמרה. So again, we're going to leave aside, but I'm just pointing it out to you as we go, this idea of he was supposed to be working the land, right? We talked about that before when we first started. But this idea of v'yani um, chehu, right, that Hashem placed, and I wouldn't say that it's not just placed, because there's a word for that in Hebrew, it's called sam, like lesim, like, you know, some tiyatamad, what something somewhere, right? But so that's just like putting something down. But here v'yani chehu, I think has, we translate as em placed, right? It's something that you do with kavana, with, with um, intention. And you, it's an important thing that you're doing. So for example, you say, we say, right? When people put on tefillin, you, you're, right? It's an important thing you're doing. It's not just putting them somewhere, like, you know, throw them in the trash, throw them in the garbage, throw, throw them on the counter. We're not obviously tefillin, you're not throwing in the trash, but I'm just saying you could use that if in um, Hebrew to say, put something somewhere. But when you're the kavana putting it, it's lehaniach. Okay, so tefillin, mezuzah, if you have a matzeva, a uh, tombstone, that you put an evin, like a, the, the tombstone itself is lehaniach um, evin or lehaniach matzeva. So, so that's what I'm saying. So at this point, what has happened? So we have a intentional placing of Adam in Gan Eden, right? And he was supposed to live up to God's desires there, live up to his potential really, right? But here, what, would, what are we having? We're having this basket of fruit, Right, and the the um, the kohen is going to be placing it. So he's going to place it. So it's again an intentional placing. It's something I'm doing this, and it's important. It's not just like I've taken it and here it is. Right, so that's important. And again, here, uh, um, same same idea down here. Okay, next, it, it, you can pop up with questions, or or you can put in the questions in the chat, and I will appreciate Elaine. I know you're on on the case, so if something comes up, please let me know. Okay, thanks. So the next textual uh, connection is Vishlecheo Hashem Elokim Mikan Eden Lavod. Again, this word Lavod, Eta Adama, Hashem Lukach Misham. So in this case, God was taken, God, Adam was taken from the ground, literally, because we saw his little dirt pile of baby pictures before, right? So, so that's, that's what it means here. Sham here is different. Hashem is putting his name in that location. But again, it's a textual link, not a strong one, but because it's a very common word. But never, nevertheless. But the Adama here, here is what I wanted to bring is we are talking about land or earth or soil. Okay. Um, so this is what I, we were talking about before. He, in, he let rest at that place in the entrance on the east entrance to Gan Eden, the Kruvim, those like the cherubs that sit above the ark, right? That, that's what I'm talking about. And so therefore, similarly, that, that was the sort of, um, an intentional placing, and here too, the place where Hashem, Yifchar Hashem Elokecha Leshaken Shmo Sham. Hashem is choosing a place to rest Himself within the land of Israel, which of course would be the Mishkan or the Beit Hamikdash. Okay, obviously this is again maybe a corner piece. Vitikach um, Mipirio Vitochal, right? So Eve took the fruit. She's she's actually physically taking the fruit. And she ate it and she gave it to her husband. So similarly here, what are we doing? We are taking this basket and we are giving it to, to the Kohen who is then going to bring it to Hashem. So this idea of physically taking something and delivering it is also part of the idea. <clears throat> uh, now, now we're getting to this idea that things have to sort of be reversed. We did something, but we need to go, we need to walk it back really. And so we need things to be opposite than what they were in the garden. So he in the garden, right? So they hid They hid from before God. They were trying to not be with God. Whereas in our Bikurim story, right? Here, So again and again and again, So here in the garden, we were trying to run away from God. We didn't want a relationship with him. We were embarrassed. We were afraid, whatever it was. Now we're coming and saying, I'm here. Not just I'm here, but I'm here three times. I'm here, I'm bringing you my face. I'm here, I'm making a declaration before you. I want a relationship, a relationship that I didn't want there, but now I want. <clears throat> and then, So God called to Adam and he, and he um, said, where are you? Like, why aren't you here? I need to see you. I, I want that relationship, right? So here, it's, it's within the declaration, right? So, while we were in Egypt, we called out to God. We are just like in Egypt, we called out to God. We're continuing that calling out to God by 
doing what we're doing now, which is bringing the Biko ring. So before God was like sort of chasing after us to have a relationship. Now we're chasing after you, God. We would like to have that relationship. <clears throat> and finally, so they heard Hashem's voice in the garden. And what did, here do we see? Here we see, we were crying out to him and Hashem answered our voice. So Hashem is responding to, to our cries, right? But we, when we heard his voice, we wanted to hide. So we, we have a good uh, paradigm for relationship in the Bikurim, not such a good one in the um, Gan Eden story. Uh, okay, so now I'm bringing this idea of subtle connections. So before I go on, there's two kinds of people. There's going to be the people who say, and I'm sorry, I might go a few minutes over, but I'm hopefully not too much. Um, there are going to be people who go, yeah, that's super cool, Rachel. <laughs> and then there's going to be people that go, oh my God, I can't believe, Karen, you think that's a connection. That's so, like, out on a limb that yeah, I don't even I don't even know what you're talking about. So if you feel that I have made a good case until now, and that's you, the second kind that don't want to have these subtle connections, just turn off your computer for a few minutes, and I'll, I'll go like this when you should come back. No, I, whatever I'm saying. I hope you don't turn it off your computer. But I'm saying know that these. I appreciate that these might be too subtle and a little bit fanciful, if you want to use that word, for people who have hyper logical brains. So here we go. The first one is in the garden. It says, So they opened, the, their eyes were open. And they knew that they were naked. They um, sewed up uh, fig leaves to cover themselves. And they put them, they made themselves chagorot. So <clears throat> the question is this basket in the Bikurim is a very small detail. We don't really need to know how come, like in what manner they brought this fruit. They could have brought it in a bag, they could have brought it on a wagon, who knows what. But because it specifically says they brought it in a tene, a tene that they're, therefore I'm going to say that it's going to try to be a tikkun, a hell, a rectification of covering themselves up, right? Because when you cover yourselves up, you're trying to not have a relationship. Right? Whereas this basket, they're bringing the fruit in the basket and they're saying, here, I have basically taken off my, my fig leaf things, made it into a basket, here are my fruits for you. So it's, it's retreating and then going forward. So, and again, the whole purpose is to improve the relationship. That's the tikkun that we're looking at. The next one, this is, if, you, if I had more time, I would say, what's the problem here? But I don't have more time. So I'm just gonna say, Right? It says, you should, they an, you should answer and you should say. But the question is, usually you answer when there is a question. So there is no question that is being asked here. So just like I do this also for Egla Arufa, one day I'll get to that for you guys. But um, if we're looking back at Ghanedin's story, then we have to know what, we're, what question is being asked. And the question being asked, as we've talked about before, is Ayeka, where are you? So now, we didn't answer it properly then, because what did we say then? <coughs> we said, um, we said, okay, I, Adam said, basically, I was afraid so that I hid and I wife, the, the Chava did it for me. He didn't step up and take responsibility. He basically didn't answer, I am here standing before you ready to take your punishment, no, no, or your whatever you, you're going to give me, God. He said, I'm hiding, I don't like this. I'm, I would really rather not be here. But now we're saying, Anita, you're going to answer, you're going to answer that Ayeka and say, I am stepping up and I am here. And finally, um, and again, this is what I said was the corner piece. Right, so the idea is, if you are supposed to be working the land, then what is happening now? You are working the land. This was your raison d'etre, like your whole life, right? And we hear, we see it again and again, which we'll see in a minute. And moreover, right, I, again, it's not the same word, but I am bringing you all of the outcomes of my work to show you because this is the, the tafki, the purpose that you have for me. You've told me again and again that you want me to work the ground. Here I am working the ground and bringing it to you. Yay. Also the word beata and now, again, I think that's a sort of a link to that was then, this is now. So now I'm doing the thing that I should have done then. Okay, and I'm just going to bring quickly. Um, yeah, I still have a few minutes. Right, this is what we talked about already. He was supposed to love Adama, right? And he, he was 
So he's supposed to be working the land. But also we see that, um, <clears throat> sorry, that these two people, the first one is Adam, the second one is Cain, they misuse the land, right? That God kicked them out, God kicked out Adam because he ate from the, the fruit of the tree, which he shouldn't have. So therefore he had to be kicked out of the land, right? Um, it says, this was his purpose in leaving the land, right? And then also Cain, when he was going to be Navinad, says, Kita Vodita Adama, right? Lotus Safe Ted Koha, like you're the earth and you are not going to be friends anymore. You did a bad thing to for Adam, I'm sorry, not for Cain, it says, uh, He killed his brother. The blood of his brother was calling out from, from the land. So basically, the, he caused a distortion in the, his relationship with the land, which was supposed to be one of his sources, right? And of course, for each of these things, he created a rift, not only with the Adama, but also remember my, my triangle thing before, but also with God, because God does not want you to kill your brother. So that's definitely a rift. And you didn't, Adam did not listen to God. So therefore that's also a rift. So he has two aspects of things that he needs to repair, Adam, Adam specifically but also kind. Okay, this is my bonus. I am not going to talk about it, but if you want to go back to this sheet, um, I'm going to say this. I, I found this, I thought it was a really cool pasuk. I've given you two translations. If you would like to write to me with any of your, your thoughts on this, I'd be happy to have a, a Zoom call with you and you, your friends, whoever you want, and we can talk about this. As an extension of that, if there's anything else in here that you have an idea that you would like to write to me about, and I'll give you my email at the end, um, I'm happy to have a, like a short Zoom call and we can talk about anything you come up with and you can invite your friends and we can we can continue this. It's an, an extended version of this year if you want. So that's just something for you to think about. I'm not going to go to, into it. Um, so now we talked about already that this is the Bikuri. So remember those subtle connections? right? The ones that people are going to go, oh, no, Karen, not that, not that. Or they're going to go, wow, that's so cool. So this was one of those. And it's really, you're going to go, I, I don't know what you're going to go. But we talked about that this is Bikurim, and these are the Psukim that talk about Bikurim, right? So, Rishit Bikure Admatcha, right? And Orphan Chemia Lavi et Bikure Admatenu, right? Bikure Kopri. So this is the last subtle slash fanciful connection. If you change the letters around a little bit, you're going to have Adam being kicked out of the garden, Mikeden, from, in, from the east, the Gan Eden, and God putting Mikeden um, east of Gan Eden, Eta Kruvim, these um, cherubs are going to be sitting there on the east side of Eden. Okay, so now we're going to just do a little, okay, Beishkin, okay. So Bikurim, Kruvim, maybe, maybe not, but let's just go further. So I just, picked out some land from the, uh, it's hopefully going to show up in my very slow computer. This is my mythical Gan Eden, right? So if you're going, if he's going to be, if you're going to set up these Kuvim, Mikedem on the east side, where are they going to be set up? Right about there, correct? If we, uh, classically, north is, um, is going upwards, right? So, so now we have um, this, these Kuvim set up in this green zone, basically. Now, Let's remember, anyone know where I'm going with this? Yes. So interestingly, when we entered the land of Israel, we too came into our special land, right? Like Gan Eden from the east. We are, we are reversing the Kruvim. We are bypassing those Kruvim with the Bikurim. By the, when we get into our land, okay, we don't do Bikurim before we get there, but once we get there, we have committed to, to do Bikurim, to give Bikurim as a tikkun, for those Kruvim to bypass that that nituk, that um, non-connection we have with God by bringing the Bikurim that, that God set up for us at the time we were expelled from Gan Eden. Okay, so this is my final slide, I believe. No, two more slides. So in, to synthesize everything we've talked about today, um, <clears throat> let's see, we can talk about, um, I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out. Right, so we have this tree that we were not allowed to eat from. And now we have these Bikurim that we have to bring, correct? They're these premier first fruits. We are coming to our land, the special place, the Gan Eden, the current Gan Eden. We, within that special place, we are going to this 
sacred space, which is the Mishkan, we are not taking from God anymore, we are giving to God, correct? Um, and therefore, and we are saying, we're showing up, we're saying we want this relationship, we are here, and, and now I am standing before you, God, okay? So the question is, how does this relate to our Ruach and um, Adama? So if we look, we see in the, in the Psukim of uh, Gan Eden story, right? She um, was looking towards her base desires. She was going downwards toward the Adama, right? She was saying, I'm going to be more like the animals. I'm going to use my, the, the afar that I'm created from and use that as the way I want to live in this world, right? And, and what we did, what we're trying to do on the Biko Rim aspect is we're trying to say, no, that's not, that's not us anymore. We're not interested in just fulfilling our base desires, our animalistic desires. Now, now we're going to be doing this. Now I'm going to be striving for this connection. I'm going to use my ruach, that spirit that you put into me, that spirit of um, independent thought, that spirit of integrity, that spirit of of chokma, of wisdom, of understanding, of growing from my animal nature into my nishmat chayim, and I'm going to try to have that relationship with you through these bikurim that I'm I'm bringing right now. And interesting, just as a, an added point, what is kedusha? Kedusha is when we take the mundane, when we take those things of the earth, and we elevate them to a higher level. So that's exactly what we're doing with bringing the bikurim. Not only is it a reversal of our Gan Eden story, but it's also taking this mundane fruit and saying, we're now changing it by doing something holy with it into something, it's creating some holiness within it art itself. And I think with that, I am finished the story and I am a few minutes over, please forgive me. I'm, if you had to leave, I'm sorry, I should have said that before. And now I'm happy to have any questions, to entertain any questions that you might have. I'm gonna stop sharing. I just want to say that that was very stimulating and excellent, and thank you so much. Thank you. Who's speaking? Just I'm trying to see who uh, you are. Miriam. Thank you, Miriam. I appreciate that. Any, it will be up. I'm hoping in the um, on the BAYT website. I'm just a promo for the BAYT uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and look at anything again, you're welcome to do that. And I'm very interested in finding out where Adam was. <laughs> ah, you have to wait for my year on. Um, well, actually, whatever. <laughs> I have a sheer on it. Okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? Okay. Very nice. I'm glad you all came. Thank you for coming. Very nice.